welcome to the show where we talk about what everyone, when everyone, and nobody cares. I'm Joshua, and this is my brother and co-host Eli, and this is Podcast. So, E, we uh, we have our usual setup today, mm -hmm. but what is all this? I, I think we're going to talk about books today. Okay. Why not talk about books? I love reading. I, I love reading, too. Some of my favorite pastimes. I haven't got a lot to do a lot in the last couple of years, but uh, I, do, I do love reading, so. Okay. So, I guess I should ask you then, um, what are you... I mean, obviously, it looks like you have some examples up here. Yeah. What are some of your favorite authors or favorite books? Do you have some... Um, well, one of my favorite authors that isn't up here is uh, um, J.K. Rowling. I, I read the Harry Potter books. I was raised reading the Harry Potter books, so um, that was kind of a given. We don't have any Harry Potter books present, though. Speaking so of Harry Potter, and just on a side note, it looks like they're making another Harry Potter movie. Um, I couldn't... With an adult Malfoy... An adult oh. Harry Potter, adult Hermione, adult Ron. I haven't seen that. Um, looks like it's in post production. See, I need to or see pre production. That I need to look into that. Yeah, that's, um, I just saw that on Yahoo uh, Yahoo News today. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I so I don't know. I, I don't so. know. I could be wrong about that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, so you like the the books by J.K. Rowling? Yeah. Um, I'm not. I, I I what they call I'm not one of those uh what they call potheads the the pot, the Harry the super right. Harry Potter fans. Um, I do like Harry Potter, but uh, I, I'm not quite like that. Um, I, I, I never got on Pottermore.com, you know, and started reading the, the fan stories and all that. I, I ne never did any of that. But um, I, I, I do like those books and that, those stories, so. Now, in that same genre, you, ha you actually do have an author up here who you, you also enjoy. Uh, J.K. Uh, um, J.R. Tolkien, um, who wrote uh, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, up here I have the Silmarillion, which is, I, I usually refer to it as the Bible of that, um, of that world. Um, it's, it's kind of like in the beginning, and it goes through how we got to, how, or how they got to where they were in The Hobbit and all that. So. I'm not, I, I do not like J.R. Tolkien's. I, I, I don't. It's okay. Um, I do like C.S. Lewis. Um, and his Narnia I series, C.S. Lewis, and honestly, his his further his Christian writings, um, *Mere Christianity* being one of his books mm -hmm. that I think is outstanding, um, and makes a very good case for Christ without ever using the Bible. There is no mm -hmm. Bible quote. There's no direct, you know, uh, scripture from the Bible. Yeah, he makes a but he makes an excellent case for Christ without without the use of the Bible, and mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting. Um, well, that's difficult to do. Yeah, it is. I, so yeah, I, I can't. And you know, he started out as an atheist. Yeah, he was an atheist before he was a Christian. So, um, very interesting. Well, and there's a lot of a lot of people talk about the parallels between um, Narnia and uh, the the actual Bible, the Bible, biblical stories and stuff. A lot of people, right? Well, it, it Aslan is Aslan being like Jesus. Or yeah, God. yeah, he, no, he, it he is. Goes, he's killed me. He's re risen and all that. It's very interesting. So anyway, that's some of our favorites with in regards to fantasy, the the genre fan. What else you got up there? Um, well, another book that I don't have up here, actually, I have my own copy downstairs somewhere, but I didn't want to go digging for it. Is a book called um, Watership Down. Okay. Yep. And it's about rabbits. A lot of people might think of that weirdly, but I love the book so much. Uh, it's by Richard Adams, by the way. And Richard Adams, I think that's the the right name. Um, well, Watership Down. It's about rabbits, and they talk, and they have some of their own language and stuff. It's very interesting, but the the imagery and the description of the book is so incredible. It's so spot on. It's it's, it's perfect. I love that book. Uh, what else do I have up here? Let's see. These are uh, these are um, Odd Thomas books from Dean Koontz. I haven't really read other stuff from Dean Koontz, but the Odd Thomas series I was an avid reader of. I I still have not read St. Odd. No, I kind of got you the last on that. one. Yes, you did. And I kind of like, oh, you might really, you like this, and I read the first one. Now, I just finished The Last Old Thomas. You didn't, and I thought The, yep. the Last Old Thomas, after I finished, I was like, oh, that's a nice ending. And I was like, no, it wasn't. kind of sucked. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've said before, one of my complaints about Dean Koontz is he doesn't know how to, I, I don't really like the way he finishes his series. Or his book, individual Or his individual books. I don't feel like he, he, he 
the first one closed well. The first yeah, the first one closed. First of all, Tom's closed well. But if you read a lot of his other books, um, and I've read a lot more Dean Koontz than you have. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, just I just feel like he doesn't end his books very well, mm -hmm. and I don't think he ends the series very well. I didn't like the end of Dog Thomas. I didn't like the end of the Frankenstein series. Well, I'm gonna have to read them. Um, so. I, I just don't think he ends things well. <laughs> I, I don't like his endings. So uh, that's just me. That's just me. Um, yeah. I do like the. I love the Dog Thomas books, and the first one is exceptional. Mm -hmm. And they made a movie out of it with Willem Dafoe in it mm -hmm. as the as the sheriff. He was that was a good that was a good, that was actually a well made movie. I thought for the compared to the book. I was not as crazy about it as you were, but it, it, it's good. Mm -hmm. So um, I also had two books from. Uh, uh, well, Bryson up here. I I actually haven't read this one. Josh just happened to have it sitting. I still haven't got to it yet. So I'll, when I get to reading it, I will. And Bill Bryson is one that we both read pretty pretty heavily. And, I, I I love Bill Bryson's books. Um, I mean he can he can be a little harsh sometimes. On he can be a little hard on things. I think he can be a little of a, a little bit of an ass about some things. But um, in general, his books are super informative and very entertaining. Very, yeah, very entertaining. They're very interesting. He he has a good way of writing. Good story. He also has. He actually did these things. That's the thing. A lot of people are like, you know, uh, he actually is writing about things he did. They're, they're very well. And he he has to lead a pretty interesting life to be able to do all those things. So probably my favorite book by him is At Home. I still haven't read At Home. You and he goes through different parts of his house and he talks about history through the eye through each room. And this is a very interesting. Um, yeah, he's a pretty knowledgeable guy. So, this is very interesting. And then you have one more book that you kind of selected. One more book, and this is my favorite book I've ever read thus far. Not saying it can't be replaced, but it'll be pretty hard. And it's um, Pat Frank's Alas Babylon. Um, and it takes place in, I believe, 1957, 58, um, during the earlier part of the Cold War. We actually do get into a nuclear nuclear holocaust with, uh, with Russia and the shit hits the fan. And it, it takes place in a small town in Florida where there's survivors. There are survivors of the, the town is uniquely place and everything. uniquely placed and everything that they are able to survive. survive. And they do. And it's it's very interesting the take on it. You get to see sort of how people would actually end up reacting, I think, to an event like that where they're like, Oh well, well we're just kinda of stuck here and you know, it's something that we've talked about this before with other situations is, you know, how actually Americans band together in the in in times of trouble. A lot of people will picture just massive riots in the streets. Now, you do have that at the center of the event, you know, like, uh, um, like during Hurricane Katrina, you saw, we saw looting going on throughout New Orleans. New, no, New, that was weird. New what Orleans. Said. New Orleans, or New Orleans, as they say. New Orleans. But, uh, I was like, New Orleans. <laughs> but, uh, um, we, we did see that going on. But think about the rest of the nation banding together to help send aid and uh, all that stuff. You, you see that all the time. When 9-11 happened, you saw that. When the when the uh, terrorist attacks in Paris happened, you saw, you couldn't go on Facebook and scroll down two people without seeing somebody's face with a with a flag over it. Right. So, with, with, a, with a French flag over it. So, we have a tendency to band together and that's kind of what you see in this book. Um, you see the the community band together, and it, it it still is, as I said, my favorite book of all time. Um, no, I've read it. Um, I think I read it maybe. Before oh, you definitely you. read it before me because I borrowed it from you to read it. In okay, class. yeah. So I think it's an excellent book. It is an excellent, it's an excellent book, and it's a well written book. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's kind of a classic book, which brings which brings me to some yeah, my so selections. What, what, what do you have? I have uh, I have uh, let's see, I have J.D. Solinger's Catcher in the Rye, and I have um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's uh, The Great Gatsby, and I do I do I do books. actually li love reading some classic literature, mm -hmm. and I have uh, I actually a enjoyed collection. The Great Gatsby. I didn't enjoy a lot of the books that I was forced to read in school, mm -hmm. but I actually did enjoy The Great Gatsby. So I, I enjoy I happen to enjoy just classic literature. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, what else I have so here? You got, I have a Bernard Cornwell. Which, I, which is all over here. You have a lot of Bernard Cornwell. I have a here. lot of Bernard Cornwell, and uh, he's a British author, and he writes uh, historical fiction. Oh, you want to so, do that? You want to do that? Oh, yep. Um, and he's best known for his uh, Richard Sharp series. Um, Which I need to read. I, I actually do want They to are really those. good, and they take place during the Napoleonic War. My favorite from his The Fort, and it takes place in a little-known battle that happened in Maine you, during you the Revolutionary War. Yeah. Um, 
and so he, you know, he writes historical fiction. They're very good. Um, Nonfiction, uh, I have Eric Larson, um, mo most well-known for actually did read that Devil book. in the White City. That was a good book. Um, and he writes nonfiction. He has a new book out about the sinking of Lusitania. Okay. And I do want to read That's that. That's one. World War One. Kind of how so, America got involved in World right. War One. So. So and I want to read. I want to read that pretty badly. Um, but I love Eric Larson's books. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? He to me. You know how like how Ken Burns is the 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 undisputed master of historic documentaries. Yes. Eric Larson's the undisputed master of historical nonfiction writing. He very interesting. You mean he, historical fiction writing. Yeah, historical not yeah. Fiction. Nonfiction. Oh, that's not right. I'm sorry. I'm I'm tired. <laughs> I'm open okay um, with. The difference between nonfiction and fiction, I'm wrong. <laughs> he, he's a lot like Ken. Bur he's like Ken Burns if Ken Burns was a writer. He has these just these little very super interesting details that mm -hmm. nobody else would have picked out. Um, just these super interesting details, and uh, I I love Eric Larson's books. I love and I love Bill Bryson's books. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not even gonna get into my favorite authors or favorite books. Bill Bryson is one of my favorite authors. Um, Eric Larson, uh, Bernard Cornwell. Cornwell. I love The Last Babylon, and I have a veritable. J.K. Lewis, you said. I have a, a, uh, a C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis, J.K. So much J.K.J.R. Uh, I have yes. a veritable ton of books. Some of them kind of obscure, some of them not so much. Um, Shadow Wind by uh, Carlos Ruiz, Ruiz Safon back here mm -hmm. was a one time read for me that was an amazing did, book. Did you have to read The Giver in school? I never actually read The Giver. That was actually a decent book, and they just made a movie about it a few years back, and I haven't seen it yet, and I really want to. So I heard the movie was very good. But the, the book was interesting. It's based in a utopian society, um, and everyone sees in black and white, but then, like, The Giver is a person who gives information to somebody. The next giver, essentially, it's his job to be the giver, and he starts seeing things in color, he starts understanding things. Because in the utopian society, they're not supposed to know things, you know? Right. So it's, it's very interesting. Well, that is isn't. I'll have to, I'm going to have to get that, because I, I've never read it, and uh, I, I do, that sounds yeah, like, that yeah, would Yeah, I, I think you would, like, I'm surprised you haven't read it, so. I, anyway, yeah, I have a variable, I'm not even going to get into all, everything I like. The Bible. The Bible, I love the Bible, <laughs> reading the Bible, um, and, you know, I love studying that. Uh, well, we talk about getting a concordance for the Bible, if you really want to understand If you really want to understand and be able to be knowledgeable, um, but I also like just a nice, easy read, and when I, when I do that, I do like to read a graphic novel from time to time. Yeah, you have a couple, I think. Um, and Batman The Long Halloween is, hands down, my favorite mm -hmm. uh, graphic novel. It's so well written. Jeff Loeb and the art of Tim Sale um, is stark, and I really like that. It's almost very sketchy. Yeah. Um, I would love to have a Tim Sale original, like, print. Yeah. Or, you know, piece. Kind of signed. Or so, yeah. Well, just, I'm not even signed necessarily. I just, like, I love the way Tim Sale's Batman looks. It's so stark mm -hmm. and so sketchy looking. So. Okay. Well, we are actually out of time. We are. So, well, until next time, I'm Eli. I'm Joshua. And this, this is podcast. podcast. Hey, guys. This is Joshua. Did you like today's episode? Go ahead and give us a like. It's just that little button right down below with the thumbs up. And uh, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, check out our Facebook. This is podcast, and you know this is the show where we talk about whatever we want, whenever we want. But we also want to talk about what you want. So give us a comment. We would love to talk with you, and we want to talk about the subjects you guys are interested in. And uh, don't forget to share the show with your friends. Thanks, guys. Whoa.